Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Today we're going to talk about the mathematics behind neural networks and deep learning. To get us started, let us define a threshold logic unit or what here I just call a unit. Each unit has two parts. The first part, as you can see here, is a weighted sum or combination of the inputs. So we have these connections, W1, W2, W3, and the inputs that they here, we call them X1, X2, X3. So what happens is that now each of these inputs will get multiplied by the corresponding weight, which is here, for example, X1, W1, X2, W2, and we add all of them together. We might also have some offset or bias term. And then the second part of this unit, what it does is to apply a nonlinear function. So this is what I show here by sigma, where the input argument is the weighted sum or combination of the inputs. If you're familiar with logistic regression, which is a classifier, you know that in that case, this sigma or nonlinear function is the logistic or sigmoid function, which is one over one plus e to the negative a, which has this nice property that for whatever the input is, the output is always from zero to one. And we can interpret this as a probability uh, value. So that's where what we use in the case of logistic regression. But in general, um, you know, as we're going to see later, um, this sigma can be any nonlinear uh, functions such as, for example, rectify linear unit or other cases. Okay, so now let's get to the part that is a little bit more complex. So we have those inputs x1, x2, x3. These are not the units that we saw before. This is just the three inputs that we have. And then in the next layer, if you look at it here, we have uh, two units that we put together. And here we use this superscript, which is this one here, to show the layer number because I call this a layer one. And then I use the subscript to show the index, right? We have one and two. And then we have to find a way to name these or index these weights that connect these units together. So the way we name this here is that the first uh, number that you can see here is the number of the unit in the destination layer. So you see all of these go to unit one in the destination layer. And the second one shows you the source unit. So this means that the first one for W11 means that it's coming from unit one in the source layer. W12 is coming from unit two and W13 comes from unit three in the source layer. And using this strategy, now we can easily find these units that we have in the first layer. So we have A11 and A12. And you can see that now we have the weighted sum or combination plus some bias term. Uh, and if you look at it, the way that we did this naming here, so we have one here and one because this is basically each weight is multiplied by the input that is yeah, coming from the source layer. And you see we have two and two. So this is by intentionally designed to be like this so that's easy to write down these expressions and the same thing with a12 that we have the linear or the better to say the weighted sum or combination and then we have the offset of bias term the key in machine learning deep learning neural networks is always being able to write things in a compact form which means that we have to write things in terms of matrices and vectors so how can we do this here we're gonna start with some inputs x. Once we form x, which contains x1, x2, x3, as you can see here, now we can form a weight metric. So this is the key behind um, most of the deep learning libraries that they're gonna form these uh, weight matrices for you that they take you from one layer to the next layer. And because of the way that we did this naming or indexing of weights, this is a two by three matrix because there are two units in the destination layer and three units in the source layer. The same way we have now a, a vector for biases because now we have two of them. So we put them in a vector format. And now, interestingly enough, we can find these two values of A11 and A12 using this matrix vector multiplication. So we have W1 
that is going to get multiplied by x. So this is a matrix multiplication. The way it works, you get the first row of w1, and then you find the element-wise multiplication by this uh, column that we have in the x, and the same thing with the second row. And this will give you these two expressions that we have here. So we have successfully uh, expressed everything in terms of vectors and matrices. Now in the next slide, we're going to see that we can go from this first layer, which we were here, so now this becomes a source layer, to the next layer, which is layer two, this is the destination layer. And because here we only have one unit in the destination layer, I can easily index this just based on which unit in the source layer they are connected to. And we can find this weighted sum or combination and plus the bias term, which we have now this output value here for A2. And the reason we use the superscript 2 because now this is layer uh, 2 that we have. And now you can see that we can form again a weight matrix or vector. Here everything is a vector because we only have one unit in the um, destination layer. And so now you can see that uh, we can write everything in a compact form to find the output. So now you may ask what the purpose of this is, right? So you can see that the reason that we did this is that we started with these raw features or inputs, x1, x2, x3. Uh, and then we were able to find some combination of these, which gave us this a11 and a12. And from now on, this part of the problem is exactly the logistic regression model that you have seen in more traditional machine learning problems. So the idea is that what this neural network does is basically finding better features to solving a classification problem in a data-driven way because once we talk about how to find these weights or connections, these are very important because we are not setting these values and this is actually what we learn from data. But you can see here the big picture that we have this uh, first part of the network, which is a feature extractor, and then the second part, which performs classification. And just to uh, wrap up what we had here and to mathematically represent everything, now we have this um, nested or composite function, which consists of two functions. So the f1 is the function that we have to take us to the first layer. And then once we find this, now we have this F2 that takes us from the first layer to the second layer or output layer. So this is the basic idea behind multi-layer perceptron or fit forward networks where we have this chain connection, which also allows us later to talk about things such as back propagation. I hope you found this video helpful and please don't forget to like and subscribe.